when we Alright, what's popping YouTube? It's WLY Precise. Today we got the disturbing world of YMW Melly now facing the death penalty by Patrick CC, aka Get You Some Water, aka one of my favorite YouTubers, aka I fuck with bro heavy, aka he don't know me though. But aka we finna get right into it. Here we are. Has been in jail for the last 1438 days. So long. For four Let me years, make sure y'all can see me right. Wondering if the rapper is yeah, in fact go. guilty of premeditated murder with the victims being his two best friends that he has known since elementary school. As of right now, the death penalty is a potential fate for him. But just before he got arrested, he released his collaboration with Kanye West that skyrocketed his fame. He had multiple songs generating millions of views and streams, and was on his way to being the next SoundCloud superstar. When the news broke that he was being investigated, people started to scrutinize him. His lyrics were shockingly descriptive. His interviews may have had clues that could tie him to this crime. His life in jail for the past four years has been rough, where he's being subject to inhumane treatment and borderline torture from the jail guards. As of today, YNW Melly is not guilty, but since we have not heard his defense yet, it's hard to imagine his innocence. Jamel Demons, yes, that's his real name, was born to mother Jamie Demons King when she was just 14 years old. The teenager and her mother raised the boy at the Orangewood Park Apartments in Gifford, Florida. In kindergarten, Jamel met his first friend, Christopher Thomas, who we now know as YNW Juvie. So then when I walk in the kindergarten room, I see him, then he just starts smiling and dancing, so it just made me happy, now I wanna be here. Since his mother was so young, they moved around to various projects up and down eastern Florida. He still doesn't know who his father is. Jamie says her son was a great kid, quiet, smiley, loved to sing and dance, but Melly admits he had a dark side to him. One that he discovered when he was just nine years old. I had a little couch with a whole bunch of toys and shit under it. And like, I seen a toy gun. I was just playing with that bitch. Like, pew, pew. Then Melly discovers his uncle's real gun. When I rolled, I hit my head under the couch. When I hit my head under the couch, I stayed up for a little bit. I seen some shit shining. It was a 22 revolver, a real gun. I'm a kid though. So I just walk out the house and I shot that bitch. And I couldn't hear out my ear for like a week. That's crazy. And then I was like, damn, it's a real gun, you know what I'm saying? If you up that bitch at a nigga and bust his ass, that's his soul in that, like, it's death in this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? All I gotta do is up this motherfucker in your ass, just <laughs> you disappear, bitch. This nigga dark, that nigga sinister, nigga ain't nothing good about that shit, nigga. Oh, God. Real shit, bro. It's tough. I like how them. Hey, music, music fire, though. Bitch look for real. I'm in love with them bitches. Before Melly was 10 years old, he was infatuated with the power of having a weapon. In seventh grade, he brought a very large knife to school and threatened to unalive himself and another girl. It's pretty clear this young man was very deeply disturbed at a young age. Shifting his focus towards music was productive for him. In eighth grade, he recorded his first song. Niggas be tripping, but never be body. You keep talking all this shit, and I'm a happy rockin' party. You a punk nigga. In 2015. That nigga sound like me when I first started rapping. Trash. Nobody listen to that shit, man. YNW was formed. Jamel went by Melly, Christopher went by Juvie, Anthony Williams went by Sack Chaser. The rap crew started releasing music consistently on SoundCloud in mid-2015 and quickly gained support from their classmates. But at the start of 10th grade, Melly caught- What a whole time. He ain't killed his homies, bro. But they saying he did, and it's like it's impacting his life in a certain way, and now everybody looking at him different saying he did when he really didn't. That, that could also be an outcome. You never know. Never know. His first case, for firing a weapon at three upperclassmen in a school zone. Demons was charged with treatment. three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and one count of discharging a firearm in public. This Are you interested in the specific Come on, bro, with these, with these weird ass, not, no weird ass, ass, ass this video. bro. How yeah, this we skipping, guy done. from school and locked up for one year at age 16. It was during this time that Melly decided to take his music career very seriously, so he got to work. I just sometime I'll be home soon. It won't be long, I promise. I will be okay. Clearly, Melly had a gift. He has a very hard. unique, raspy, yet deep cadence, and naturally knows how to control his pitch. He spent his days behind bars writing love songs and murder ballads. Girl. <laughs> You know I love it when I'm next to you. 
Riding through the 772. When he got released around October of 2016, he released his track 772 Love, which gained a lot of local support and some online buzz. That's he then good. previewed another track that he wrote behind bars that would end up changing his life. Melly knew this track Murder On My Mind was going to be a big one. He eventually recorded the song on a whole new beat with a faster tempo and released it in March of 2017. This is where Melly started taking his social media presence very seriously, focusing on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Since he was on parole from his previous bid, the judge actually used this song as a violation of his parole because of its detailed lyrics of Melly fantasizing about murdering people. And thus, he got locked up again. Now using song lyrics to incriminate someone is illegal in some states, and a lot of people like to make the argument that it's just art, which is definitely true. But Melly, even outside of his music, has made multiple questionable statements that are too dark to ignore. It was during this second confinement where he really started to generate a following. It's unclear how much time he spent locked up, but he was now 17 years old, and around October of 2017, his team was promoting a hashtag free YNW Melly campaign. His family and friends even produced and filmed an entire music video for his song 772 Love, which now has over 40 million views on YouTube. Upon his release in March of 2018, he was starting to explode. He immediately dropped a music for Melly the Menace, and did a number of live performances in Florida. his fame was leveling up. He released Blue Balenciagas, which would go on to do 70 million views, released a track called Butter Pecan, and he was traveling around the country and enjoying his freedom. All the while, Murder On My Mind was generating millions of views, and rap fans around the world were Sound catching on to the YNW Melly wave. In fact, a lot of artists like Young Thug, Lil Durk, T Grizzly, and Uzi were big fans of Melly before most other normal fans caught on. He was a lot of artists' favorite artist. Right after his 18th birthday, no he more. got arrested again. For hey, y'all wanna know my favorite rapper is Juice World, man. Juice World, go, man. They got a song together though, Trippy Ray, him and Juice. Got it. Six Kids. That shit is a banger. Y'all gotta go listen to that, man. That shit heat. Possession of marijuana, possession of weapon or ammunition by a convicted felon, and drug paraphernalia. Cortland Henry, aka YNW Bortland, Melly's longtime friend, was also arrested for possession of a weapon or ammunition by a convicted felon. They both posted bonds and were released the following day. With Murder On My Mind exploding, it was time for him to record a music video, and it's too graphic for me to even show. But he visually depicts the aftermath of a crime scene where he shot a friend and the friend slowly dies in his arms. These lyrics have been psychoanalyzed, and even though he wrote this song many years ago, the song may have shockingly foreshadowed real events. I didn't even mean to shoot him, he just caught me by surprise. I reloaded my pistol, cocked it back, and shot him twice. His body dropped down to the floor and he got teardrops in his eyes. He grabbed me by my hands and said he was afraid to die. I told him, it's too late my friend, it's time to say goodbye, and he died inside my arms. In his first interview with No Jumper, his whole demeanor was strange, but he revealed something very interesting. So what you got tattooed on your face? Tell me about it a little bit. What? On my face? Yeah. We got the heart on this side. All right. What's that say above your eyebrow on that side? Which side? Oh, either one. What's I it? Know. I know. No, I got Sat Chase right here. That's my brother. That's my twin. Okay. And I got Juvie. Juvie? Yeah, brother. Just a lot of your friends who passed? Yeah. No, nah, them my niggas right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my brother's right there. My bad. I wouldn't get none of my friends tattooed on my face until they died. Yeah, nah. I'm this not shit, a good friend like you are, apparently. Nah, this shit for life. <laughs> So Melly has his two best friends name tattooed on his face. These types of tattoos are usually to commemorate lost ones, but in this case, they are alive and well for now. As Melly was finishing up his album We All Shine, one of Kanye West's writers, Sci High the Prince, showed him Melly's music. Ye flew him out to LA to work on music, and when he got there, they had a pretty funny first meeting. I was eating a pickle in his refrigerator. When I turned around, I heard, who pickled him here? And then, I was like, oh shit, Kanye, what the fuck? Then he was like, hell yeah, yeah, how long the pickles been in there? I'm like, I don't know. I smashed that bitch. Then he came and he was like, nah, I'm not gonna touch though. <laughs> so Melly, his manager 100K track, and Kanye are in the studio for two hours listening to music until he asks Melly to play some of his songs. And this is what happened. Then we play mixed personalities and he goes crazy. 
he's like, bruh. This is me. This is Yay. This is Kanye. This is easy. <laughs> this, this is me. And he's like, DJ I'm like, Damn. 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 So me and Matt looking at. Hey, Patrick CC, bro. That's who you should do a video on next. For so for so. Hey, if y'all haven't yet, make sure y'all hit the subscribe, like it, man. I'm trying to get caught into the algorithm, man. I need y'all help doing that, man. So show me some love, man. Make sure y'all subscribe. Turn on post notifications on comment too. That are like, damn, he probably it. He like. Bro, I want to jump on this. This is me. This right. is easy. He said, I want to jump on this. But then I thought, told him no. He was like, damn, why? I was like, because we about to drop it. We're in the process. He's like, bro, whatever I got to do, I get it done. Like, to be on the record. Like, because this is really me. Like, I'm feeling a connection to it. Kanye resonated with the Mixed Personalities track, most likely because of his struggles with bipolar disorder, which Melly also admits he has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. They came together, filmed a music video with Cole Bennett, and it would ultimately get released. Least. This is only the second SoundCloud artist that Ye collaborated with, before Donda. The other one was Lil Pump. So Melly just secured a ticket to superstardom with that feature. But just when things were looking great, a very, very dark day was around the corner. On October 26th, 2018, YNW Bortland, whose real name is Cortland Henry, shows up to Memorial Miramar Hospital with two dead bodies in his car. The victims were both on the right side, front and back seat. They were the bodies of Anthony Williams, aka YNW Sack Chaser, and Christopher Thomas, aka YNW Juvie. There's one thing you need to do before you buy anything online. Bro, I'm tired of these ads, man. Until you watch this first. Melly's two childhood friends. The vehicle had eight shots on the right side and one through the back window. The police asked what happened and Bortland said they were victims of a drive-by shooting. He said he left the New Era recording studio in Fort Lauderdale, drove west on 595, then south on 75, and exited on Miramar Parkway heading west. He said on southwest 160th, a vehicle passed by on his right side and started shooting. He ducked down to avoid being shot, and when he sat up, he saw his friends bleeding out, so he drove to the hospital, which was conveniently right around the corner. After this report, the detectives and officers shut down the crime scene and walked 12 blocks on foot. Not a single report of gunshots, nor evidence of a shooting was found. Portland was tested for gunshot residue on his hands, but came back negative. The roommate, Dontavius Withers, of Sack Chaser and Juvie, was questioned by the police since he lived at their last known address. He said there were two cars when they left the studio, a gray Jeep, which is where the murder took place in, and a red Mitsubishi, which Withers said that he and Melly were in. He said he went straight home and found out later that his roommates were dead and didn't know where Melly was. But it was later proven that Withers lied about the situation. Before police showed up, he was with Melly at Fredo Bang's house. Withers changed his story and said that Melly was in the Jeep when they left the studio, but then got into the Mitsubishi around Sheridan Ave when Withers Snapchatted him to pick him up. Police obtained security footage from the manager of the recording studio, which proved Melly left in the gray Jeep. He got into the back left seat. Remember, victims were in the front right and back right seats. Cell phone records show that Withers went straight home without stopping, so Melly never entered the Mitsubishi. When police investigated the Jeep, they found one 40 caliber shell casing on the floorboards where Melly was sitting. It was inside a white plastic bag. If this was a drive-by, there would not be shell casings inside of the car. This supports evidence that shots occurred from inside of the car. Police were able to obtain T-Mobile cell phone records that track their location. This is crazy. Hey, but hold on. Hold on, though. Because there were times where I've seen shells around, and I ain't shoot nobody. But I've also seen a gun shell laying around before, and ain't nobody get hit, and it was inside the room. And I don't know how he got there. So what do you mean? What do you mean? It could have been like, uh, the shell just ended up in the car. Calm down minute by minute. These records show that Melly Bortland Where's the gun? That's my question. Where's the gun? Mac and Juvie. I know I sound crazy though. All trying to assume some shit. I know I sound crazy as hell. Y'all like nigga, you know he shot this man, bro. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know nothing. 
car together at the time of the murder. They did confirm that the Jeep exited on Miramar Parkway, but turned north on Southwest 184th and then west on Pines Boulevard at 353 and then turned back east at 406. This is enough time to make it all the way to the outskirts of the city where nothing is around and back. The cell phone records also show that they were driving around the area west of I-75 before arriving to the hospital at 435. Melly's cell phone was separated from the car at 432, just three minutes before the Jeep arrived to the hospital. This is where people are assuming that Melly and Bortland were trying to get their story straight, driving around the city, and then ultimately Melly hopped out before Bortland took them to the hospital. Melly then FaceTimed his girlfriend, saying that they were a victim of a drive-by and he needed to be picked up, which confirms that he was at the scene of the crime. So police knew that there were a lot of conflicting statements from witnesses, and even some straight up lies. They needed to conduct this investigation immediately. The next day when the news broke, YNW Melly took to Instagram and Facebook to grieve publicly, claiming that they took my brothers from me over jealousy. Melly proceeded with his career as usual, he released a documentary on his YouTube channel on December 4th, which featured Sack Chaser and Juvie, and a little bit about how close they were growing up. It also featured a section about how obsessed with guns Melly was. At the end of the documentary, it stated that, four days after the completion of this film, YNW Melly and his friends were a target of a drive-by shooting. Then the Genius video dropped of Melly explaining the lyrics to his hit song, Murder On My Mind, where he describes his love for guns and says he isn't a human murderer. It's a murderer. I murdered a and I murdered a beat. I am not no human murderer. But on January 3rd, 2019, he was arrested in Florida on weed charges. His sinister smiling mugshot went viral. Just three weeks later, while he was still locked up, mixed personalities dropped with a lyrical lemonade video. This was a huge moment for Melly and Cole Bennett, as Kanye was the first veteran superstar rapper he had worked with at that point. The song went mega viral, and Melly's fame exploded. This was the first time a lot of people have heard of him. He was about to become a mainstream artist, but on February 13th, just less than a month later, the investigation concluded, and a warrant for his arrest for the murder of his two friends was now official. He immediately turned himself in despite claiming his innocence. Two weeks later, the evidence against Melly was released. Police discovered that YNW Bortland lied about where the crime actually took place. The police used a canine to investigate the crime scene on Southwest 160th Street, which is where he reported the drive-by happened, but the dog found nothing. Officers then investigated a more rural area that they thought maybe was the crime scene. We get fits a drive-by, how are they going to find anything? I'm sorry. And the canine found some evidence. The dog discovered eight 40 caliber shell casings and two okay. types of glass that matched the front passenger and rear passenger window of the Jeep. So now they know the crime scene is not even close to where it was reported. This prompted them to investigate the vehicle again, and okay. they decided to do a trajectory analysis using rods and strings to determine flight paths of projectiles. And they confirmed that there is no way this could have been a drive-by shooting based on the bullet paths and the wounds mm. suffered by the victims. The police suspect mm, getting good. Mm. that they parked. I wonder what's going to happen, bro. Do y'all think he going to win this case? Bro, like, what? I don't know, bro. I don't know how to feel, bro. I just know bro made good music. But if he did it, man, damn, that's tough. That's tough. Hold on. I accidentally muted it drive-by shooting before showing up to the hospital. When autopsy reports came back regarding the victim's wounds, the evidence shows the initial lethal shot occurred from inside the vehicle and was initiated from the left rear passenger side, the same position occupied by demons, which is Melly. An intermediate wound by definition would indicate a distance of three inches to three feet between the victim and the weapon. However, due to a three centimeter stippling pattern, the weapon was in a close proximity to Thomas's head. This would be a straight up execution style shot. The gunshot wounds to the back of Thomas also indicates these wounds were inflicted after he was shot in the head, as the projectiles entered Thomas's back when he was leaning to the left. Evidence from the autopsy revealed that both victims' wound paths to their heads were from a left to right direction. This direction contradicts the statements made by Henry and does not support the statements of a drive-by shooting that occurred on the right side of the vehicle. Basically, they think Melly shot both of his friends point blank, 
and they drove around trying to come up with a story and staged a drive-by to make it look more convincing. Someone once said that being a stranger in a strange land is a curse, whoever it was. And obviously the police have garnered a lot of evidence to support that. Because of Melly's music about guns, murder, and admitting to having another personality, Melvin, who is reckless, unpredictable, and willing to kill, he hasn't exactly made himself seem like the most innocent man in the world. Most of his fans claim that this is just art. It's too common for rappers to make songs that glorify violence, gang activity, and all kinds of heinous crimes. This is all just for entertainment, and Melly is actually a good person. And when it comes to the music, it's hard to accuse someone of crimes based on that, but I think we can all agree some of his interviews and candid remarks about his alter ego Melvin make him look very suspicious. Plus, surely someone wouldn't kill their best friends, right? Well, there's absolutely nothing that indicates Melly had any beef or bad blood with Juvie, who he has known since kindergarten. However, with Sack Chaser, there is some suspicion. A video surfaced on the internet of Melly's mother saying this. Don't ever try to come for me. Cause I don't even play them type of games. Like, what 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 the fuck you got that I ain't got? Oh, you threaten me with your little gun? Ooh. Bitch, I got big guns. So she said Ooh. Sack Chaser threatened her with a gun and also said that she has bigger guns. That'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. YNW Melly Juvie. He had to be hanging out with Sack Chaser way more. They was closer, possibly. And that'll do it bro so in one of do it. I, I can't Drake. i'm not finna sit here and make no opinions on this shit, bro that'll do it though and don't throw it my mom bro so we can indicate from these that she might be into a more dangerous lifestyle than most mothers or maybe she was just being emotional on camera either way she may have just gave the judge a reason to believe that there was a beef between melly's mom and sack chaser and that that's melly crazy. would most likely defend his mom other than that, there isn't any strong intent for him to kill his friends, which is very important because they're trying to accuse him of premeditated murder. There are tons of rumors with very little or no evidence at all. Speaking of little, I have little subscriber count right now, so you guys should help me get my subscriber count up by liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel, and turning on the post notification and watching my videos, because I'm trying to make sure y'all enjoy the content. I'm putting out good content for y'all so y'all can feel me. Enjoy it, man. Rumors that Zack Chaser was supposed to get $200,000 when Melly signed and he didn't want to pay him. Rumors that Zack Chaser got into a fight with Melly one time and knocked him out. Even rumors that Melly and Zack Chaser were in an intimate relationship and there was. Nigga, look how big this nigga is. God damn. Wait, nigga, why am Deputy Melly is this small? I thought this nigga was like 6'8, six, 6'3, six, for real. But like, damn, this nigga. Damn. Jealousy. There's an alleged video of Melly admitting to the murder, but it was just him singing Kevin Gates lyrics. There's a message he sent to a random Instagram account the night of the murder that says, I did that, but with no context provided. But again, all rumors and very low evidence. It seems like the prosecutors have an extremely weak case. There is no confirmed murder weapon, and there is no intent. So to charge someone for first degree premeditated murder and seeking the death penalty, they need a very strong case. Also, keep in mind, we have no idea what Melly's defense is going to be. Four years later, and we still have only heard one side of the story. And since Melly has been locked up, his life has been rough. He pled not guilty in March of 2019. The next month, they announced that they were seeking the death penalty. He announced in June that he would be home soon and was seen in court smiling. Melly vs. Melvin was his third studio album released while he was locked up, which eventually goes gold, and it spent 31 weeks on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. Then in March of 2020, he's seen smiling in court again. In April, he tested positive for COVID-19. He'll be filing a motion for a restricted release in hopes of better care due to any jails not being prepared to treat this new virus. He hopes for your support and to recover soon. Pray for Melly. Send positive energy to him, please. Despite his health, he was allegedly involved in several fights with inmates, guards, alongside inmates, etc., causing him to lose his privileges and send him to solitary confinement for 70 days. Then YNW Bortland was granted house arrest, which is extremely uncommon for someone to get released facing the severity of these charges. Bortland told, Bortland told, he just, he told, there's no way he's going home on that case without telling bro. He told 
think of as resuming. His team released another project in 2021, Just a Matter of Slime, which had an insane list of features, trying to hold on to the audience that is still there to support him. His physical condition got worse when it was reported that he had an abscess in his lower jaw, which is a bad chronic infection because of his diamond implants. He was denied dentist visits, a regular toothbrush or floss because they can be used as weapons. People suspected that the jail are trying to I torture and up. break him down while he awaits this trial. In March of 2022, I mean, y'all could have still gave bro the toothbrush and some toothpaste, let him brush his teeth real quick, nigga, and took the toothpaste and toothbrush back. Like, why, why are y'all niggas making shit difficult for us, bro? Like, nigga, I know we in jail, but nigga, I it. nigga, teeth could be clean cut. Like, he filed for a speedy trial and was granted it. We thought we were going to get the answers, then it was pushed back a month, then another, and ultimately postponed indefinitely in May of 2022 after his own defense decided to rescind their speedy trial notion. There was another report that an inmate snitched on him and said he had shanks and pipe bombs in his cell and he was trying to escape but when they investigated, there was nothing. However, they did find weapons in someone else's cell close to him, so they were trying to pin it on Melly. At the end of 2022, he had made multiple long posts on his Instagram begging for help, citing specific officers that are abusing their powers, mistreating him, revoking his phone access, only letting him out of his cell for one hour a day, watching his every move, threatening to beat him up, and making sure his family never hears from him, cutting off all his communication with others, and straight up torturing him. These Instagram posts let us know the type of inhumane treatment that YNW Melly is facing right now. Now, reminder, he has not been found guilty of anything, so this treatment is definitely excessive. Going into 2023, we still do not have a trial date. Four years, Melly has been behind bars, waiting to know his fate. The prosecutors have 600 pages of DNA, ballistic evidence, witnesses lying, Melly's own suspicious statements on social media, but they don't have a murder weapon, they don't have intent, and apparently they don't have anyone willing to testify against him. If Melly did this, it would be considered one of the most heinous crimes in rap history, but we don't know what his defense will be. So as of right now, he is innocent. Innocent. Hey, innocent to proven guilty. Well Facts. Uh, here we man. are going into 2023 and it's going to be... All right, man. It's WLY Precise, man. I'm going to catch y'all in the next one, man. Make sure y'all stay tuned, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, turn on the post notifications, no man.